Hi students, today let us learn a story, Native Wisdom, written by M. Yawa Baik. The author narrates the interaction between a native person who acts as a tourist guide and a rich businessman who visited the place. Leon Moulinou was a tourist guide in Manaus, Brazil. He loved the local Amazonian forest and had practical knowledge about the place. One day, he met a rich businessman who wanted to see the forest. He thought natives were simple people and knew nothing about the forest but as a piece of land with woods. He was stung by a stingray and Leon saved him by applying a salve made from local plant leaves. Now let us read the lesson. Once upon a time, there was a poor South American hunter called Leon Moulinou. He lived on the outskirts of Manaus in Brazil and earned a living by working as a guide for tourists who came to see the wildlife in the Amazon rainforests. Leon loved the forest, and though he did not make a lot of money, he enjoyed his work. And then, there was always the chance that a rich tourist, if pleased with Leon, would give him a generous tip. If you want to see the wildlife or plants in a rainforest, you have to walk along the many small narrow trails made by animals like tapir and peccaries, on their way to the water. There is water everywhere in the rainforest. The forest absorbs the heavy and frequent rain like a giant sponge. Then it slowly releases the water in the form of little streams and rivulets that flow along until they eventually join the mighty Amazon. In fact, there is a web-like network of these streams winding through the thick forest. Most of these streams have several types of trees lining their banks and even growing in them. The dyes from some of these trees seep into the water, turning it into a certain coffee color. Although you cannot see through the water, it is perfectly clean and good to drink. When you walk the trails, you have to cross several such streams in the course of a day's trek. One day, Leon was accompanying a rich tourist who had come on a business trip to Brazil and wanted to see the rainforest. Unfortunately, this was the kind of man who thought of forests only in terms of wood that could be extracted and who thought that all forest dwellers were stupid and ignorant, only because they often could not read and write. Aha, Buckman, he said to Leon. So what does your rainforest have that is worth seeing, eh? Leon did not reply, except to say, Sir, my name is Leon. No offense, pal, said the man. But all you South American tribesmen are called Buckmen, aren't you? Not by our friends, said Leon. Just then, Leon saw a trail off the bank of the river. So he brought the boat they had been travelling in to the side and tied it to an overhanging branch. He and his companion then got out of the boat and stepped onto the trail. Leon bent down and took his shoes off and having tied them together by their laces, threw them over his left shoulder. His companion was confused by this and said, Hey man, shoes are for the feet not for carrying over your shoulder. If I were you, I'd wear them. Leon did not see anything and walked along barefoot. Shaking his head in confusion at the stupidity of the natives, the tourist followed his guide. They passed through solid vegetation, dark, damp, and appearing to be devoid of any living being. It was only when Leon stopped and drew his attention that the tourist would see the many, many different creatures of the rainforest. He 
would realize, for instance, that the moth he saw flitting from flower to flower in a forest glade was actually a hummingbird. The thick liana, draped with a richly patterned bark, had a flat head at one end of it, for it was really a boa constrictor. Lying in wait, he would reach out to pick its pretty flower, only to have Leon spin around, strike his hand away and tell him that what he was about to touch was a dangerous nettle. Soon, they came to a point where they had to wade across a stream. The tourist took off his shoes and laughed out loud when he saw Leon putting on his shoes. Man, this takes the cake, he said. If you wade through water with shoes on, your shoes will get wet and spoiled. Leon did not say anything and entered the knee-deep water. His companion, still shaking with laughter at the stupidity of his guide, followed. Halfway across the stream, the tourist yelled with pain and fell into the water. With great difficulty, Leon hauled him out to the bank and discovered that he had been stung by a stingray. The stingray is a flat fish that lies buried in the sand in stream beds and uses the sting in its long whip-like tail to hit and paralyze its prey. It also uses this as a defense when someone is about to step on it. When Leon had been able to soothe the pain of his companion, with a salve from certain leaves. He said to him, Where the eye can't see is where people need shoes. Where the eye can see, you don't need shoes. It is not my shoes that I'm worried about. It's my feet. Now let us see the summary of the lesson. Nidhi Wisdom by Yava Ali Bey is set in the Amazonian forest of Brazil in South America. It is an account of interaction between a poor tribal called Leon and a rich American tourist over the course of a trek into the forest. Right from the start, the tourist shows he is uncouth and disrespectful to his pompous and arrogant manner. He routinely insults the forest dwellers, including Leon, and thinks nothing of it. Just before they set out on their trail, Leon takes his shoes off and walks barefoot inside the forest. This gives the tourist more reasons to ridicule Leon. Leon ignores him and goes on to reveal the mystery of the Amazon rainforest to him. When they have to cross a stream, Leon puts his shoes on while the tourist takes his own pair off. Once again, the tourist mocks Leon because he thinks that Leon is simply spoiling his shoes. As they cross the stream, the tourist who cannot see past the surface of the water steps on a stingray and gets stung. After Leon helps him to safety, he reveals to the tourist his reason for not venturing barefoot into the places where he cannot see. The theme of the story that wisdom is not the domain of the rich alone. Even the simplest and the poorest among us can turn out to be the wisest. The lesson also teaches the importance of respecting other people's traditions and ways, even if they may seem different from our own. It is thus a gentle critic of our modern ways, which often mock at traditional forms of knowledge. The story fills the reader with a sense of wonder for the natural world with its detailed descriptions of the Amazon forest.
Leon's behavior and attitude towards the forest inspires a sense of reverence for the natural world in the heart and mind of the reader. Now let us see the word meanings. Leon Moulinou. It's the way to pronounce the word Leon Moulinou. Amazon. It's the world's largest river that flows through rainforests across South America. Tip. A sum of money given as a reward for a service. Tapir. A herbivore with a small trunk found in South and Central America and Southeast Asia. Peccaries. Small hoofed mammals found in North and South America. Rivulets, small streams that usually dry up during summer. Forest dwellers, people who live within forests. Buckman, a rude way to refer to a forest dweller. Devoid of, without. Draw his attention Make him notice things. Glade. A clearing or an open space in a forest that usually has grass growing in it. Liana. A thick woody climber that grows on trees. Boa constrictor. A snake that kills its prey by winding itself around its victim and suffocating it. Spin around. Turn around quickly. Nettle. A kind of plant that stings. Wade. Walk through water with some effort. This takes the cake. An informal and mocking way of saying this is so strange that it is hard to believe. Hold. Pulled or dragged with great effort. Paralyze. Make it unable to move or feel. Soothe. Heal or give relief from pain. Sal. An oily balm. Students, please write the word meanings in the notebook and learn it. Keep reading the lesson and learn the word meanings. Thank you for learning along. Thank you and have a great day.